Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Elliott Homestead. Today, I have herbs on the mind. I have not been feeling that well as of late. Sadly, I got a sickness that my kids brought home from some friends and it happens. It's par for the course, but it's also one of the reasons that we started growing our medicinal herb garden two years ago. And it's also why we sort of stock up on homemade goodies that we know are going to help us this time of year. So today we're gonna to make one that I'm out of my fermented garlic honey, alongside bringing up our echinacea tincture, bringing up our fire cider, heading out to the herb garden to harvest some of the herbs that are out there that I would still like to use. My hope today is that we can really fully appreciate all that these herbs and all of these homemade goodies bring to our immune systems and into our homes, really. I've had a lot of experience with culinary herbs and learning how to use those over the years, even for medicinal things like peppermint tea, for example, if you're having digestive issues. What I'm not so familiar with is some of the herbs that I planted that I knew I would need, but that needed time to grow. So I'm gonna go poke around out there and see what I find. I still have so much to learn, and I really love being a student of these medicinal herbs and learning how to use them more and more. Today's highlight, however, is fermented garlic honey which requires no herbs whatsoever. Just some really beautiful garlic that we harvested out of the market garden earlier this summer and some of our raw honey from our bees. So we're gonna be harnessing the power of both of those superfoods, making something really wonderful that will really help us in these coming months when sicknesses are just a little bit more prevalent. And I love being able to do that from our own backyard. But before we go out into the herb garden, I would like to thank Thrive for sponsoring today's video. So this is my latest Thrive order that I saved over $48 by ordering through Thrive and it's full of a bunch of herbal teas that I do not grow or cannot make myself. So it's the perfect thing to stock up on. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store where you can go online and shop from the comfort of your own home. Their mission is to make healthy living affordable to everybody. One of the reasons that I love to use Thrive is because it's really convenient when things are delivered to my door, especially like this last week when I was really feeling under the weather and I was able to have all these beautiful teas delivered right to my doorstep. All orders over $49 ship free. So it literally costs nothing to have them show up at your door right when you need it. You can join by visiting thrivemarket.com forward slash the Elliott Homestead to get 30% off your first order and to get your free gift worth up to $60. Again, Link to that right below the video. All right, so here is the herb garden, two years in, and it's not its most beautiful time of year, of course. Everything's getting ready to completely go dormant for the winter time, but there's still a lot to be grateful for out here, and it's really starting to fill in. So I haven't harvested too much. I've let things go to seed because I want it just to spread and to kind of be this wild, wonderful place. The mint, of course, has made itself quite at home and spread into the pathways, but that's fine. Even some of the chickens have been using this to lay eggs instead of going in the coop where they should go. Now, the big problem that I've had in the herb garden so far is that the chickens scratched up all of my tags and I came out and very panicked and tried to put them back where I thought they went, but I know I messed a few of them up. So some of the plants I'm still having to sort of learn again. Like this one, for example, I believe is wormwood. I think we have some blue tansy over here. There's some of them that I naturally know and know well, like dill and rosemary and parsley and all the culinary ones that we can also use for medicinal purposes. But it's just kind of neat for it to see it growing in and spreading around. And next year, I think we're gonna be able to harvest a lot of the herbs out here um, and use them in new ways. So there's a lot to learn. Sage is another plant that can be used in all kinds of medicinal ways, as well as culinary, which I mean, they're just so incredibly useful <laughs> and it's exciting because I've known sage for a long time. I've known how to use it in a culinary way, but learning how to use it in a medicinal way, it's like, um, 
understanding your friend in a new way, hearing one of their stories you've never heard of before. I find it quite romantic. Now, this is an herb, watch out, Birdie, that I cannot remember. I'm going to have to look up my order and figure out what it was that I ordered so that I can try to do process of elimination. Uh, one of the ones that I am sure of that Birdie has just pushed all over me, this is a stinging nettle, and this is really wonderful to make a tea out of. You can eat it in soups and cook it up into pestos and all kinds of wonderful things like that. Um, I can feel it poking through my jeans now. Um, but this is a really great herb to dry for tea. So I'm really trying to get this to take off. I'm not harvesting too much from it at all. I think I've just harvested a handful here or there for a fresh tea, um, but it does sting. So it kind of goes to show you, you need to understand what you've got. Be cautious with it, be careful with it because they are really powerful and really wonderful. And sometimes they have just a little bit of a bite. <laughs> This big, beautiful plant here is actually marshmallow. And I can't remember what you're supposed to do with it. I remember reading about it and getting really excited about it and planting it. And now here it is two years old and it's this big, broad spreading plant. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember. So I'm gonna have to do a little research on that before I harvest any. And it is surrounded by oregano. Oregano, a lot like garlic, is called nature's antibiotic. And again, culinarily, we use this all the time and I dry big bundles of it in my kitchen for the winter time. But medicinally, I know that this can be made into a tincture and soaked at a really, really, really low temperature in oil and used in lots of wonderful ways. I'm really familiar with oregano oil, but not making my own. So it's like this wonderful jump in opportunity for education with what we have right here. I grow a lot of parsley and a lot of different types of parsley in the herb garden as well. Now, I never like to be without parsley in my kitchen, but I would love to hear in the comments if any of you use parsley for anything medicinal. Are there any uses for it medicinally? I'm not sure. We'll add it to our stash. Um, this is a really fun one that we use to make our homemade fire cider. This is horseradish. So we harvest some of the root each year and as long as there's a little piece left, it'll grow back year after year. It's so beautiful and warming. So we'll make our own homemade fire cider and also our own horseradish. One of the very exciting pieces about this is that you are forever a student. I'm forever a student of sourdough bread or gardening or even learning about how to use all these beautiful pieces that exist right here in a better way that benefits our family, it benefits our health, and it benefits our minds too, even to learn these things. I find it quite exciting and after not feeling so well last week, this is a really refreshing way to spend some time.
So my fermented honey garlic has been sitting up in a dark place in the pantry. And a few times a day, I just come by and flip it over to make sure that the garlic's, garlic's nice and moved around. There's no air pockets. Look how much fermentation has happened. You can see all of the bubbles rising to the top. I have to come by and burp it, which you do with fermentations a lot, which just means unscrewing the lid a little bit and letting any gases that have built up escape. But it actually smells really beautiful, really strong, really powerful, but really beautiful. So the idea with this fermented garlic is that you will take, you know, I have some gigantic cloves in here, so you could easily cut these in half or even in a quarter, take one with a spoonful of the honey, and um, it'll help keep illnesses at bay. It doesn't take very long of being sick to realize that you would rather eat fermented garlic than feel gross like that. So I'm really excited to have my stash built back up so we can add this into our daily repertoire, along with our elderberry syrup, which is another daily one that we take, that we make every single year. And then we keep the echinacea tincture and the fire cider on hand for if we do get sick, we have some big guns to bring out. But this one will be a part of our kind of a daily consumption from now until spring. really sweet mm. and really mellow. It doesn't actually taste quite like garlic. It's really yummy and good for you. Mm -hmm.